Greetings, friends. I'm Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Today's topic is one I'm excited to share with you about. It's called The Future of Nutrition, Four Important Trends. Now, as much as I try to live in the here and now, I kind of like the future. I love futurizing and looking into my crystal ball to see what might be unfolding in the years and decades to come. Of course, such forecasting is essential in financial planning and raising a family and education and technology, science, politics, you name it. But we don't always look to the future when it comes to nutrition. That's why I'm excited to share with you when I consider four of the most important trends that are already happening in the field today and that scientists and clinicians will be focusing on for a while to come. I'm interested in you getting a jump start on things. I'm interested in each one of us knowing the inside scoop right now so we can each begin to put some of the excitement that's happening in nutrition research behind the scenes to good use now. So in no particular order, here's four exciting trends I'd love for you to know about. Trend number one, epigenetics. Now, it can be argued that the discoveries and the explosions that are happening in the field of epigenetics might be the most important scientific work in health and nutrition in this century. Epigenetics is a study of how DNA and genetic expression can be changed without any alterations in the DNA gene sequences themselves, but by extra genetic factors that impact what the gene does and how it expresses. Epigenetics means on top of, epi means on top of, around, or outside the gene, genetics. In the simplest of terms, we've all been taught in our earliest science classes that our gene expression never changes. So if you have brown eyes, you have brown eyes. If you're a male, you're a male, female, female. That's what you are, end of story. And indeed, there are certain genetic expressions that will last us forever. However, we might have genes for alcoholism, genes for breast cancer, genes for brain disease, and yet epigenetics says that it's environmental factors, the factors around us that will influence whether such genes are turned on or off. Now underline that one, please, because this is a groundbreaking understanding. It's a major game changer. Genetics loads the gun, but environment pulls the trigger. And when I say environment, I mean the foods you eat, the air you breathe, the water you drink, the thoughts you think, the exercise you do, the lifestyle that you lead. It means your level of stress or relaxation, and it can mean the specific supplements or herbs that you take, all of which can literally and scientifically influence whether a gene is turned on or off. So the beauty here is that this puts the power into our own hands when it comes to health and good nutrition like never before. We're discovering that things like turmeric, essential fats, B vitamins, stress, and all sorts of toxic chemicals and substances can literally switch genes on or off. Scientists have even noted such genetic changes that can happen quickly simply when someone meditates. Genetics is no longer predestiny. It's a co-creative process. There's a vast amount of research happening right now behind the scenes to learn about what foods and what substances, meaning herbs, vitamins, supplements, etc., turn on and off which particular genes. Powerful stuff, my friends. Trend number two, the importance of the gut microbiome. So there's a vast amount of research that's exploding with the understanding that our gut ecology, meaning all the little tiny organisms that inhabit our digestive tract, are fantastically important for optimum health. So consider this. There are more organisms sitting in your digestive tract as we speak than there are people on planet Earth. So think about that. Each one of us is literally a world that's inhabited by billions of billions of tiny little creatures. And these creatures are symbiotes, meaning they are meant to live in harmony with us. We provide an environment in which they can live and prosper, and they provide all kinds of amazing benefits that keep our body happy, healthy, and long-lived. Scientists are now beginning to study how very specific bacterial strains can provide very specific benefits for the human body. So in other words, some bacteria literally contribute to increased bone density, some to cardiovascular health, others help with brain health and emotional well-being. 
Into the future, we will literally have identified bacteria strains that can be used to treat hundreds of very specific symptoms and diseases. Now, how cool is that? We've known for a while that gut bacteria are needed and necessary for digestive health, immune health, and the production of various nutrient-like compounds in the body. We know that a healthy gut ecology also keeps other organisms that may be harmful to us in check. But we're learning the importance of gut bacteria goes way beyond what we ever could have imagined. Now, another fantastic statistic that comes out of research into genetics and gut ecology is that over 90% of our DNA is indeed bacterial in origin. We are literally living off of these creatures and they live off us. And we incorporate their byproducts into the very structure and function of who we are. It's pretty amazing. Now, here's trend number three, fermented foods. Closely related to the important trend of the power of gut ecology is the trend in fermented foods. This is literally a case of going back to the future. Somewhere in your cultural or genetic lineage, it's a good bet that your ancestors were likely eating some kind of fermented foods. It could have been fermented vegetables, pickles, sauerkraut, it could have been miso, it could have been yogurt, fermented dairy, fermented drinks, even fermented animal and fish products. And for sure, because our ancestors likely lived a little closer to the earth than we do today, traditional cultures and societies soak up a lot of their friendly bacteria, literally check this out, by walking barefoot, being in the soil, farming, touching the earth, working with plants, and having hygiene practices that were actually more moderate and less chemically intensive and invasive. The point is there are plenty of ways to not have enough healthy bacteria in our gut. Health begins in the digestive tract. Fermented foods have been a powerful traditional way that humans receive a good amount of natural probiotics, which means, by the way, healthy, friendly bacteria. You may have noticed that there's a renaissance in natural fermented products like yogurt and fermented vegetables, sauerkrauts, and all kinds of drinks you can find in the health food store. And if you ask around, you can often hear amazing stories from clinicians who treat their clients in part with food. Introducing fermented foods to a poor diet are an amazing way to gradually increase gut health, which means improving digestion, elimination, immunity, sometimes cognition, and so much more. Trend number four, eating psychology. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a little biased here, but with that being said, eating psychology is one of the most important trends that's happening in the field of nutrition. That's because so many nutritionists, dietitians, health coaches, doctors, and all sorts of health practitioners are realizing that there's more to good nutrition than simply telling someone what to eat and what not to eat. So many of our struggles with health are profoundly connected to who we are as human beings and what's happening in our personal inner worlds that will then impact our literal nutritional metabolism. So lots of people know about good nutrition, know what they're supposed to do, but oftentimes they just don't do it. And that's about psychology. That's all about who we are as human beings and what's going on inside of us. So what I wanna to say to you is what we eat is half the story of good nutrition. The other half of the story is who we are as eaters, meaning our thoughts, our beliefs, our stressors, our hopes, our dreams, our triumphs, our fears, relationships, so much more can powerfully impact our food choices, our appetite, and again, quite literally, our digestive and calorie burning capacity. So the more we understand the mind of the eater, the better we can be at providing ourselves the nutrition and the nourishment that we need most. So my friends, these are four of my favorite biggest trends out there in the nutrition universe. I hope this was helpful. To learn more, go to psychologyofeating.com. The Institute for the Psychology of Eating offers the most innovative and inspiring professional trainings, public programs, conferences, online events, and much more. Through our Eating Psychology Coach Certification Training, you can grow a new career and help your clients break through the most compelling eating challenges of our times. If you're focused on your own eating and health, the Institute offers a great selection of one-of-a-kind opportunities to take a big leap forward in your relationship with food. 
We are proud to be international leaders in online and live educational events that are designed to create the breakthroughs you want most. Our professional and public programs are powerful, results-oriented, and embrace all of who we are as eaters. I'm talking body, mind, heart, and soul. For questions, you can always email us at info at psychologyofeating.com. We'll be sure to get back to you real soon. This is Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Thank you so much for your time and interest.